Oh boy, here's the episode a lot of you have been asking about. In today's episode, we talk about how short daily workouts can actually amplify your gains. Now here's the giveaway for today's episode. It's a new program we just wrote called MAPS 15 Minutes, 15 minutes a day to get a phenomenal body. Plus there's an advanced bonus version in there for those of you that need a little bit more workout every single day and like to do big compound lifts with barbells and dumbbells, so free weight version. Anyway, we're gonna give that away for free. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on notifications. Do all those things. If we like your comment, we'll notify you in the comment section, and you'll win free access to MAPS 15 minutes. Okay, now everyone else, it's a brand new program. We're just launching it, so check this out. It's going to be $20 off, plus we got the bonus advanced version included for free, plus we're including two free eBooks, The Power of Sleep and The Inclusion Training Guide. So if you're interested, go to maps15minutes.com and then use the code 15SPECIAL for the discount and all the free giveaways. Also, don't forget to check out our new channel, Mind Pump Clips, short clips of really smart, fun things that you'll learn about fitness and health. Go check it out, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Short daily workouts may actually be better for you in terms of results and consistency than less frequent, longer workouts. This is a big deal. I've been waiting to talk about this. I know. A lot of anticipation. Very, it doesn't happen too often where, you know, we're, we're sitting down, we're talking, and we get kind of these breakthrough moments when it comes to fitness. We've been doing this for so long that almost never happens, mm -hmm. but it definitely happened. Um, God, it was, how many months ago was it where we were kind of discussing this and, and talking about consistency? This is the most, this is actually the most important uh, factor when it comes to exercises. How can we keep people consistent? Um, and we all traded notes and talked about how we found with clients that had trouble showing up to the gym two or three days a week, you know, for their typical hour workouts, that it was easier for them to just do a daily short workout mm -hmm. every single day. And then the light bulb kind of went off and we thought, oh yeah, you know, let's look into this and let's, let's, let's experiment this with, with this ourselves and see kind of what happens. Well, this question popped up a lot and I think we were all always trying to address it in the most effective way that we could in terms of like, if I only have so much amount of time, like what is actually effective for me to do? Like, and so we, we would spitball a lot and think about the best lifts that we could try and accomplish or whatever level you were as a lifter, what we'd probably have you do. And I think that was sort of the spark of, of realizing that, you know, we used to do this a lot for clients in general, in terms of whatever workout that we had, we had to be flexible and then adjust and then also find out what they would do the most consistently. This one was really uh, interesting for me because like we're talking about with clients, I had figured this out with my clients a long time ago and always happens with them first, doesn't it? Yeah. And I guess the, the attitude that I had was, why would I ever do that? I love to work out one. So I like, I enjoy, you know, hour workouts, sometimes longer. Uh, I'm advanced, you know, I've taken my, my physique to the, the, a peak, uh, physique. So why would I, you know, do this thing that I used to do with my beginner type clients, like this, this idea that, you know, I'm trying to get them to build momentum and be consistent and all the, all the benefits that I found in these short daily workouts, um, but why, why would I ever, ever do that? And I'm, I'm on like month three right now of, uh, applying exactly what we're going to talk about today. And I, I'm actually so blown away. I'm, I'm really blown away by, cause I, of course I anticipate Cause if you do the math on the total minutes, uh, that I'm training, even though I'm training every single day, it's such a short period of time. It's that, probably equivalent to like what? Three, three long workouts a week, right? Yeah. Or even a little less mm -hmm. for me, right? Um, so it's 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 not quite the same um, amount of volume. So I know that I'm reducing a little bit of volume, and I, so I anticipate. Okay, I'm probably not going to build a lot of muscle. That wasn't really the goal. This is also why I kind of did the time. I was just like, you know, I really feel good. I feel I feel some of the best I've ever felt in my life right now. I don't think I look the best as far as my physique, but I feel some of the best I've ever felt, and so. That's kind of where my mind is. That's my goal right now. Uh, I'm focused on other aspects of my life. And so what can I do with the least amount of effort and be consistent with it that will give me the greatest return? Okay, let me experiment with these short bouts that I have been teaching clients for years, 
but have never really applied to myself. Mm -hmm. Never, never would I ever just go in and train for 15 to 20 minutes uh, consistently, at least not for a long period of time. I've had like, you know, interruptions right. of like a, a vacation week or so. I'm, I'm, I mean, consistently training that way and only that way. And, you know, I was building muscle and I was building more muscle than from what I was. And it just was like, this doesn't make sense to me. Like uh, my, my volume can't be higher. Why is my body responding so well? And I just think a couple things were happening. I think that it was a, a really sweet spot balance. Uh, for the amount of calories that I was I was consuming, I felt that I was never overtaxing my body, and so it just has been responding. And I feel like joint wise, muscle mass wise, like everything, I I feel the best I felt in a really long time doing these short workouts. Well, you know what's funny is that there's studies that back this up. In fact, there was a more recent one, and this was in uh, this was in 2022, so this year. The title of the study is Greater Effects by Performing a Small Number of Eccentric Contractions Daily Than a Larger Number of Them Once a Week. There's other studies that show that um, it's not necessarily how much you work out when it comes to health, but it's rather how frequently, how frequently you yeah. work out. There's old studies that show that two 20-minute bouts of cardio is more effective for fat burning, for example, than one 40-minute bout of cardio. And then you look at like, super advanced Olympic uh, athletes. And they figured this out a long time a long time ago in the Soviet Union that their athletes got better results if they did like short, frequent workouts. Mm -hmm. Now, these are extreme. These are super high-level athletes, okay? So, so you're not going to necessarily apply this to yourself. But in comparison to their Western counterparts, instead of doing like a two-hour workout every day, they would do like three 30-minute workouts or three 45-minute workouts or whatever. And their strength gains were, I mean – they dominated the world of Olympic weightlifting uh, for a long time. We didn't learn about their training methods until the the collapse of the Soviet Union and some of the coaches came over. So there's there's some interesting stuff here, especially surrounding strength training. Now, there's definitely value if you're looking for long distance endurance for training for long periods of time, right? Yeah. You want to get the kind of That'd endurance. That would be the exception. Yeah, where you're, where you want to be able to last for two or three hours. Well, yeah, you, you're going to have to kind of train that yeah. way. But when you're talking about muscle building, the fat loss effect, that's the side effect of muscle building, the metabolism boosting, um, all the other benefits, the health effects, joint the behavioral health. effects, joint health, all that stuff. It seems like it's better doing short, frequent workouts than it is doing longer, infrequent workouts. And it's, yes, for when volume is controlled, but I'll even make the argument that you could even get away with a little less total volume with frequent workouts and get similar, if not. Well, that's what results. I was just yeah. explaining that I have felt. I felt like I, I'm almost certain my volume. Now I can't be, I can't be completely certain because I haven't tracked. Right. So, but just, I'm pretty good at being able yeah. to gauge my volume. I've been doing it and have been tracking it for a very long time. So it definitely feels like my volume is reduced yet. I'm feeling an increase in muscle. Yeah. It completely parallels, uh, skills like acquiring skills, skill training in general. Yes. Uh, and from what my experience, just trying to develop very specific athletic skills. Um, it was always best to perform it not too long of a time to where fatigue was something that had to be a consideration. Uh, it was just about the perfection and, um, you, you know, the mechanics of that very specific type of a skill and movement. Uh, and I could just be super focused on that. I could come back refreshed. I could do another bout of it, but it was repeating that sequence daily and something that w my body would respond so much greater towards because now I'm building really good habits and really good behaviors around that. Yeah. Like how, like what's going to get you to learn how to make a three pointer better, uh, you know, faster doing 20 minutes every day of practicing three pointers or doing, um, 140 minutes on one day. So one day you do 140 minutes over two hours versus 20 minutes every single day. I think any coach will tell you that the daily frequent exposure will get you to, to, to perfect a technique faster. Now, what, what does this have to do with strength training? A huge portion of the results you get, a big, big portion of how effective your workout is, is how uh, is skill acquisition. We tend to look at exercise, especially strength training, as, uh, well, that just makes you sore, that makes you sweat, that makes you tired. We don't consider them to be skills, but they very much are skills. Mm -hmm. Squatting, pressing, rowing, deadlifting, 
are all definitely skills. But I definitely want to back up to the consistency portion because this is by far the most important factor when it comes to long-term results with any workout program. I've said this before, a subpar workout routine is going to be more effective than a superior workout routine if the subpar routine is done consistently and the, and the superior one is done inconsistently. Consistency is the problem. That's the problem that we need to solve for the average person. And people are more likely to be consistent if you give them a short workout every day. And we found this with clients a long time ago. I learned this a long time ago with clients. If I gave them daily short workouts versus two long workouts, they're far more likely to be consistent with the workouts because we've all heard this, right? You get Once you get the ball rolling, it's easy to keep it going. Or you know, once I stop the momentum, it's hard to get back on track, right? Uh, we know this. And when it comes to consistency, I, I got the most success out of the clients that had the most trouble with consistency by having them do a little bit every single day. I'm so glad you went this direction because we did that episode not that long ago where we we talked about these benefits of these kind of short workouts and it was a really popular episode. We got it, it stirred up a bunch of stuff in our forum and one of the things I read uh, uh, there was a handful of people they were like, I don't get it. You guys have these, you have these full body routines that are hour long. And now you're saying that 20 work, 20 minute workouts are superior or better. And it's like, Ooh, hold on. Okay. It, this is the part that matters. Yeah. So part of why I'm doing it right now is it, it fits my lifestyle. And it's been, I, I like this idea of, Oh, I can one, I can do this single 20 minute workout. Sometimes I've even broken up in two short 10 minute workouts where I split the exercise. One, I do an exercise earlier and then I do another exercise later on. And I feel like I can interact with my son. It's not like this major 50 minute workout there. I feel like I need to be so focused and and not distracted. Uh, so it's working. It works for me to be consistent right now. And I like it, right? It's not, uh, oh, this is, this is this new science we found out. Therefore, this is better than a 50 minute workout. If the three day a week full body routine is something that fits great in your, in your lifestyle and you enjoy doing it, then stay doing it. And I think that's the, the point of the consistency point mm -hmm. that you're making right now. It's like, but what we found training clients was even that was sometimes a hard commitment was to get somebody to come to the gym three times a week for 50 minutes plus in the gym. And I found convincing someone to do an exercise or two every day, which only takes 15 to 20 minutes. I had more success. And, and here's the irony. The irony is I bet you your total time working out now is probably longer because you probably miss less workouts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? You just and, miss less workouts. Right. And there's and there's days when you feel great and you do a little extra of abs and some other things sure. that add in there. So yeah. It's no. not a big ask yeah. is the point. And here's another thing too. We talk about this with nutrition all the time, but it's, it's the same with exercise. If you want to be able to develop this kind of long-term relationship where with exercise where you're consistent, what you need to work on are your behaviors. You need to work on the kind of behaviors that, that lead to consistency. Well, behaviors are, are more effectively solidified with small, frequent exposures. This is true for any behavior. Mm -hmm. You know, imagine if you only brush your teeth once a week for an hour versus every single day for, you know, 20 minutes or whatever, or whatever the time is. You're more likely to be consistent because of the short, frequent exposures. So from a consistency standpoint, and even if we go back and you miss one, I missed one workout this week. That's 15 minutes, Yeah. right? If you do two workouts a week, which a lot of people will do, and, I, and I've talked about, and I wrote my book over this, that the average person, the most we can expect from them is like two 45-minute or two 60-minute workouts. Okay, we're just not going to get people working out hours every single day. Now, there's definitely people listening right now super into working out. They work out for an average every single day. Fine, that's that's wonderful. That's, that's great. But the average person, we're not going to get that from. So for the average person, if they miss one workout, that's half of their work. That's like half the time that they work out all week versus if they just missed one 15 minute or 20 minute workout because they do them every single day. So for that alone, this is a, a phenomenal approach to exercise, but there are some benefits when it comes to strength and muscle as well that the advanced lifter can learn from yeah. for sure. Yeah. I think, I mean, this is such a helpful tool. I wish I would have thought about this for new lifters coming in. Uh, in terms of like how daunting everything is, like you just, you feel like you, where do I start? How do I tackle all this uh, in front of me to get to my goal? When in fact, if you just take it down to um, the, you know, the, the real important movements, the real important things to really uh, focus on and master, and then be able to just take, you know, a shorter amount of time that's 
not going to completely dictate your entire day and have to revolve around it. Uh, then the next day it's achievable. And then you just start to, to build these, these manual efforts end up building an automatic kind of response. It's almost like you put in the work to where you get closer to where it, it gets into the subconscious where things just get easier. And this is where like the real skill acquisition kind of plays a factor where your, your body just starts to respond and it, everything becomes easier. Well, totally. I, Give this look, you, you ask a very busy person, <clears throat> Hey, give me, um, Give me two hours a week. Can you look in your schedule and find two one-hour sessions a week? And, and you know, most people can do that, but it's it's a lot more challenging. Now ask them, can you give me 15 minutes a day? Do you think you can find 15 minutes every single day? And I guarantee you it's a lot easier for them to do so. It's just far less daunting, a lot easier. Well, and in terms of like the advanced level, so it's, you know, massively beneficial for them too. They'll think about how many times that, um, you know, your your patterns have been interrupted. You've gone on a trip, you know, your environments change, your work schedules change, like all these, these things have interrupted that like consistent dialed in, you know, workouts where to, to build that back up, you know, that's quite a, a lot of uh, um, barriers in front of you. Whereas this is so much more achievable to build your way back towards a really consistent I'm so routine. glad you said that because you both said something that that bothered me. And it's not like so much what you said as much as it's like what bothers me is what's happened sometimes with this podcast is that for some reason, uh, we've been pigeonholed into like this podcast that really helps newbie lifters out. And I right. find that insulting because I don't, I don't think that I'm a newbie right, lifter, right. right? I consider well, that's myself- That's where our heart is, though, is, is people that aren't making it. I know, but we, we and yeah, I think we make I the mistake you. even sometimes. Of, I, I, I'd rather say it like this, like at what season of your life that you're currently in? Because, uh, and to the point that you were starting to make right there, because I, I'm an advanced lifter and I'm getting tremendous benefit from lifting this way right now. And I think it's silly for someone to think like, the same way that I thought for a very long time. It's, it, it is, oh, I'm an advanced guy, so that's not for me. Oh, Mind Pump t tells you to do this and that. That's yeah. because they're talking to beginners. No, we're talking about people that at a certain phase or a point in their life or a season in their life, what, and that could be, you could be a beginner in that season and you could be an advanced person that season. That's fair enough. But an advanced person could also be at a point in their life where training this way is extremely beneficial. It's not like this is for new people only, this is for advanced people only. Mm -hmm. And I and I don't like that. I don't like that that gets, that it gets- No, what's listen, here's the deal. What's true for the beginner is also true for the advanced person. You just scale it. That's yeah. it. It's yeah. the same. It's By the way, it's the same truth. So, uh, you know, working out 30 minutes a day may be superior than your typical three, maybe one hour workouts in the week in terms of consistency. It may be, right. right? Advanced or beginner. Right. So so what we're saying is true. Now we're using 15 minutes, uh, you know, 20 minutes because we're talking to the average person, but you could scale that up and it's also going to be true for you. And the advanced lifter also has to find ways to be able to stay consistent. Now they're now the advanced lifter, they've they've already solved a lot of that, but the advanced lifter plans on working out for the rest of their life. They're going to have kids. They're going to change jobs. Right. They're going to move. Everybody encounters the challenge with consistency at some point in their life. Mm -hmm. They get tired, they get whatever. And it just it just seems to work a lot better. And by the way, speaking to the advanced lifter, I'll tell you something right now. I got, I've got never been as strong as I've ever been in my life when any lift is when I practice that particular lift very frequently. Just a fact. So that's a, that's a fact that a lot of people know. So like you want to get really strong at the bench press? Well, rather than benching and doing a, a big old chest day on Monday, just do this. Instead of doing chest on Monday, just practice bench press most days of the week. Mm -hmm. Varying intensities, varying techniques and tempos and weights, and watch how fast you get stronger. This is well known, by the way. This is well established oh, yeah. on how you get strong really fast. So there's stuff that we're talking about here that if you're advanced or consistent already that you can pick up on and apply to yourself and then see see what happens to your, the results that you get. So here's another point here, which is, and you mentioned this uh, earlier, Justin, which is about fatigue. Fatigue is a technique killer. It's a strength killer. Yep. Fatigue is a big problem when you're trying to do good form, good reps, when you're trying to maximize strength gains. Well, short, frequent workouts make fatigue less of a problem than less frequent, longer workouts. Like if you do a whole, you know, hour workout, even if you're training different body parts, fatigue does still play a role towards the end of the workout. Like you may be doing biceps at the end, but earlier you did deadlifts and squats and press and all that stuff. It's still going to play somewhat of a role. If I'm doing 
much more frequent but shorter workouts, 20, 25 minutes, let's say. Like in my case, I do 25, 30 minute workouts every day right now. Fatigue's not a problem at all. My technique is great because the workouts are so short. Well, yeah, you're only choosing a couple exercises. That's like that. it. Yeah. And now what does that mean? It means my technique and my form is always it's better. Yeah. It's usually better. My force output a lot more focused. My force output is usually better, right? I, I feel stronger. I feel better. So there's something to learn from this when it comes to the advanced lifter as well. And that's a big one. It's that fatigue, you move that out of the way. And we're talking specifically about strength training. Now, if you're looking for maximum endurance and stamina, well, then you want to play with fatigue because your goal is to overcome fatigue and become a more stamina endurance. But when it's about strength and muscle, fatigue is an issue. In fact, studies will show that long rest periods. Now, we've made the case for short rest periods as well, and there's definitely some benefits to that. But generally speaking, head to head, the long rest periods are superior. Now, why is that? You get rid of fatigue. You're mm -hmm. training purely strength when you rest for three minutes or four minutes. Strength athletes know this. So, so fatigue doesn't get in the way when you do these really short, frequent workouts as much as they would with less frequent, longer workouts. Well, and that rolls into your next point is because of that, you tend to choose the more effective exercises. Totally. You know, for sure, when I'm lifting for an hour, there's always a couple exercises in there that are just, they're they're like fillers almost. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm already- Just slowly degrades yeah. as you get- I you did know, the two or workout. three big compound lifts already. I'm pretty taxed. I'm already sweating. I'm already, fatigue is already starting to set in a little bit. Let me go get some cable flies in. Let mm -hmm. me get some like preacher curl exercise in. Let me get some of these, these like less bang for your buck type of exercises. Whereas when you're only working out for- 15 to 30 minutes in this short window, you're only picking two to maybe three exercises. Mm -hmm. So all of them are super effective exercises and you're not as fatigued going into them. So the technique on them are even better. Yeah. Yep. By the way, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go a little extreme here just to, to make my point with the advanced lifter. Let's say you're an advanced lifter and you work out for an hour every single day. So seven days a week, seven hours a week. Do you think you would get better or worse results if I took all those seven hours and put them in two workouts during the week? So you did two, three and a half hour workouts. Why wouldn't you do it that way? Yeah. Fatigue would just crush you and it would stop being, it would cease being a strength training. Right. That's, strength an, that's building an extreme workout. example of what you're doing with the seven, one hour workouts. That's right. It's the same exact thing. That's what I'm trying to say is what we're talking about. It, you just scale it and it applies to advanced intermediate lifters, just like it does to beginners. But when, when we're talking to beginners, we're telling truth there. There's truth for everybody, yeah. but if that's, that's it right there. And what is it? It's that fatigue. Fatigue's a killer. Why? No way in hell somebody who worked out every day for an hour would do two, three and a half hour workouts and get the same results. They get crappier results mm -hmm. because those, by the time they get past that hour and a half window of the workout, uh, they'd feel like garbage and the rest of the workout would turn into just kind of- And why is that any different than you know, trying to shoot free throws uh, under fatigue where you're, you're, you're not so much concerned about your technique as much as you're just trying to get the amount of shots out, like for instance. So that being the goal of it being under fatigue, like if I'm trying to build my endurance is one pursuit, but if I'm really trying to pay attention to everything going on to be able to sharpen it and to refine it and make it better every single time, fatigue is the enemy of that process yeah, completely. Now, here's one of my favorite parts of this. Um, and this you learn as you do, as you work out, uh, you know, over the years is you start to really value and understand the benefit of just how it affects your mood and your mental state. I've talked about this so many times on the podcast, but if you ask somebody who's been working out for 10 years or more consistently, what's your favorite part about working out? It's, it's not the physical, they, they appreciate that, but it's the mental and the mood boosting effects. And the studies back this up, by the way, like exercise done consistently, outperforms antidepressants, anxiolytics. It outperforms the best drugs that we have for, you know, boosting mood and, and people's attitudes. And the results tend to get better and better over time. And what's interesting is when you exercise, there's this long-term effect that fitness and health that, you know, improved fitness has on mood boosting chemicals and neurotransmitters. But there's also this short acute effect that you get right away. When you work out, you get this these boosts of these neurotransmitters and these chemicals that make you feel good, norepinephrine, epinephrine, dopamine, you get the serotonin that comes afterwards, maybe a little oxytocin uh, as well that, that comes from it. And that's that acute effect. Well, here's what I love about daily short workouts. You get these daily mood boosting chemicals uh, every single day. You get these little boosts. every. And I noticed this with trigger sessions for MAPS Anabolic. Mm -hmm. It just put me in a good mood all day long when I do these really light band workouts. Well, when you're doing workouts every single day, 
um, you're doing that. By the way, if a workout goes too long, you start to lose some of that. This is why when you go too long with a workout, yeah, you, feel you feel like feel garbage taxed. at yeah. the end, right? When you do these short workouts, you get these these boosts in these feel good chemicals. Now, why is that important? Well, first off, it feels awesome. But here's the most important thing: is it what it does is it encourages a good relationship with exercise. It encourages, it speeds up the process where you develop these behaviors in this relationship with exercise where you crave it. Mm -hmm. This is the challenge now with the average person when it comes to consistency is they don't love working out yet and it takes time. It takes a long time to get them to really love it because they start to connect this. When you do it like this, it happens a lot faster because what you do is you raise the feel good part of it and you kind of get rid of the feel bad part of it because they're not working out long enough to really crush themselves, mm -hmm. but they're working out just long enough to feel good. And so within a short period of time, they start to look forward to their daily workout, which encourages this this behavior in this relationship that's long term. Not only that, but it has it has tremendous carryover into all the other aspects of your life, which we always talk about. That's you know, that's what's so beautiful about training and making this a lifestyle is it becomes less and less about the aesthetic changes that you get, you know, the body composition that you get from training all the time, and it becomes more about how it enhances every other aspect of your life. Mm -hmm. And this is such a hack, Sal that I've even started to break my 20 minute workouts into two 10 minute workouts sometimes. So one of the things that I have learned to love now, which when we, this podcast first started, I was kind of the anti home gym guy. I was the go to a big box gym. This was all before COVID yeah. happened and everything that completely changed that for me. I now have a home gym. I haven't been to a public gym in years. And one of the things that I've learned to love about having it in my garage is that I have this flexibility to go out there and go do three to four sets of squats and then go right back into my house, do my normal thing, come back out four hours later and do three to four sets of overhead press. Mm -hmm. And I get those, those mood boosting benefits each time. Yeah. So it's like this cool. And then, and I know, I notice how I am as a husband. I notice how I am as a father. I notice uh, I'm, I'm more likely to help around the house mm -hmm. and uh, do do other chores and other things. I'm more likely to get work done that I've carried home from going to work. Like, Thus, you're more likely oh, to yeah. do these short workouts. Right. It's it, a huge hack. It's a huge, it's a yeah. huge hack. And, and this is for the, the listener who's, who's trying to become consistent. We talk about this with nutrition all the time. This is the same thing. You know, the, the, key to this becoming a lifestyle forever is learning how to attach those benefits, right? It's so easy to look in the mirror and to get on the scale and to check the body fat and go, oh, yep. when I do X, Y, and Z, it makes me look this way or I weigh this much. And they tend to ignore the other stuff. Right. And then, and then, but you don't realize the more powerful stuff, the stuff that will become more addicting for you to continue to do it is learning how that translates into all the other aspects of your life that I think most people would agree are so important. If you ask most people, what's more important that you're 3% lower body fat or that you're a better husband and a father? I'm pretty sure they would say that. Yeah. What's more important, you help out around the house and you knock these things out or you're better productive at work or that you're 2% body. Like if you can help people understand that and learn to start to connect to that, you have this new relationship with exercise and it becomes less about this punishment and more about this like, oh my God, I'm gonna go do this real quick and I know what I'm gonna get from it. Well, what's interesting is one of the challenges with developing a long-term relationship with exercise where somebody wants to do it for the rest of their life, one of the challenges is getting a person to develop, to change the relationship to the feeling of pain that they get while they exercise, to change the relationship to what the fatigue feels like, and to change their relationship with the occasional soreness. So. My, you know, initially when someone first starts working out, the, the pain is almost, they can't tolerate it. They, ah, this, this hurts. I've had actually, I've actually had clients drop dumbbells because I thought something was wrong. I know you guys have, have seen <laughs> yeah, that before too, where the let go of the burns rope. Or, out. Yeah. What's going on? Right. Or the fatigue. Oh my God. I hate the way that this feels right now. It takes a long time, but eventually like I feel the same pain in a workout that a beginner would, but I've developed a relationship with that kind of pain to where now I enjoy it. But it's not the pain that I enjoy. It's that I've connected it to all these other wonderful results and stuff like that. Okay, so what if we look at if we look at this this chart of good benefits of exercise that are easy to connect and and to create good behaviors around, and the bad kind of the bad feelings around exercise that take a lot longer. What if I could lower the bad feelings and raise the good feelings? What does that? Short workouts. Yeah. Short workouts feel good, mood boosting. I do just enough where I'm like, oh, I'm invigorated. Don't get as sore. I don't get as fatigued. I don't feel as much pain. I'm going to accelerate the process of developing this relationship with exercise where I start to crave it. So like what you talked about, Adam, where you noticed 
If I do a few sets in, during the day and then I do another few sets later on, I feel good. I bet you when you start to feel kind of tired or sluggish, you're like, I'm going to go in the garage yeah. Yeah. and do a few sets it's of like something. a cup of coffee. Or it, I'm a, it, it, it's just like, you know, one of those just boosts you can get and you know what you're going to receive just by getting like a 10 minute focused exercise in, uh, you know, that's going to promote more of me moving around, which is another big factor to your point of like the lifestyle, I think is such a big point. Uh, to come home and not just plop myself on the couch. I mean, think about how much resistance you have once you're in that uh, frame of mind and when your body's in that position, you're fighting a lot to then get back up and then go help out and contribute. Justin, that's how this started. This is how this started because I was getting so frustrated that I would drive, I have an hour drive and sometimes it's turned into an hour and a half since, since COVID's ended and I get home and I'm so like lethargic and exhausted from driving, yeah. just from sitting still yeah. like that, that it's really tough to motivate myself to go crush an hour workout. And so it actually, this all started from this conference. This was before we did our first 20 minute thing. Like I had started doing this because I was like, okay, I don't need to go an hour, but let's at least, let's go do an exercise. That's how I'd have that conversation with myself. And then it, I had enough. I had enough oomph to get up and at least do that. And then I was like, oh, I could do another one or two exercises. And so then it started to turn into this like, okay, I can't, it's really tough for me. And that's why I think this is so, so powerful because you're, you're acknowledging that it is tough. You have a, especially if you have a job that's stressful and you have, a, you maybe get up really early or you, you a very physical laborious job and then you come home and it's like, oh man, last thing you want to do is go get after it for an hour in the gym sure. when you've been getting after it all day. But a little bit easier to convince yourself, like, I got 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. I got 15 minutes to go do that, especially if I know that I'm the, the point you made, Sal, is that I'm maximizing the positive benefits that I'm going to get from the, the energy, the mood, yeah. and, I'm, and I'm reducing the the negative aspects that you feel sometimes from workout, the the burning, the sweating, the hard, the achy, the soreness the next day. The stuff you need to get psyched for. Yeah, the stuff that you really got to get amped up for yeah. to overcome. It's like, oh, I'm not going to, I know that if I go do three to four sets of an exercise, it's not going to crush me, yeah. you know? And, and so that's how this all started was this, I was having this challenge with actually motivating myself to get back up after I've been sitting for an hour and a half in the car to get this work. I was like, I can do an exercise yeah. or two. And then it turned into this routine that I've absolutely fallen in love yeah, with. You know what else it does is it, it, it does add some really good structure to a person's day. So we've all, I'm sure, you know, most listeners have heard people talk about the value of like a morning routine or, you know, adding structure to your day for consistency and discipline throughout the day. Well, studies have shown this, that behaviorally speaking, when people start their day with a workout, they're more likely to do better behaviors throughout the day. So it's like, I, I woke up this morning, I did my short workout, I'm ready to tackle the day, I feel good, I started with something good, right? Exercise tends to have that effect on people. So it it's just another way of, of enhancing or creating those behaviors that lead to long-term success. It also can help break up your day. So I think this is a great way to break up the day when middle of the day is when you're you're tired. God, two o'clock, I want to go to sleep. Well, can you take a 20 minute break and do a 20 minute workout? Yeah, I can. And then what ends up happening afterwards? I feel really good. Now I've added structure to my day, broken it up and made it feel better. What about the end of the day? Can it be a way to, to end the day on a good note? Yes, it can. Sure. So my point with this is it's very flexible and it's an incredible way to add structure to your day which can lead to better behaviors uh, down the road. Here's another one that I like about it, which is it's easier to modify because you're doing it every single day. You're less likely to ignore the way your body feels and how you feel because, you know, this is the only workout I get during the week or this is only one of three workouts I get during the week. Well, when I do it every single day, if I wake up this morning kind of tired, I'm going to go easy. It's not a big deal. Like if today's Wednesday and I only work out Wednesday and Saturday, like I'm tired, but you know, it's my only workout. Mm -hmm. I got to get out or I'm not going to do it at all. So it really opens a door for you to develop the skills of using exercise as this multi-pronged tool to enhance the quality of your life. Because that's that's the best, like really, if you do this long-term, you do this right, you can use exercise as this incredible tool where if I'm feeling tired, if I'm feeling stressed, if I'm feeling energized, if I'm feeling like I need more creativity, if I'm feeling almost anything, I can use exercise so long as I modify it appropriately to inc improve the quality of my life. Well, when you do a little bit every single day, there's more opportunities for that and you're less likely to ignore your body signals because, well, I'll do another one tomorrow. 
So today I'll go a little easier or whatever. Yeah. And to Adam's point about kind of splitting up, um, you know, some days I'll have days where I'm like, I have maybe two to three exercises lined up for, for one of those sessions. And I know that, um, my energy just isn't there and what other fact, you know, what, whatever it is, that's the factor in terms of me being stressed or, or I didn't get good sleep or whatever it is. Um, I could take something I know within that three exercise selection. I could at least do the one I know I can do. And then I could split up. I'll come back later in the day and I'll find out, oh, guess what? I do have energy now mm. and I'll perform that one. And I'll do my heavy squats a little bit later in the day uh, as my body kind of wakes up. Because me personally, a lot of times the mornings are really tough um, time for me to generate that kind of um, ability of, of energy and, and oomph to, to get going. So uh, for me to be able to have the flexibility to split it out and then uh, attempt it later on in the day is huge. Yeah, the modification part has been one of my my favorite things because, I, and I have, like, I, you know, I'd be lying if I said that it's been this, you know, six day a week, 15 to 20 minute workouts, same time, same day, every single day. It's actually not like that at all. It's like sometimes I'm splitting up that that into 10 minute workouts. Sometimes I've had days when I didn't get to it and then I've, I've paired up two days, which is the way I have structured it. It's like I'm doing basically a, a major compound lift for the lower body one day. And then the next day is a uh, upper body compound lift. And so I'm kind of alternating mm -hmm. back and forth. So if I didn't, and there's two ex two main exercises, sometimes there's a superset in there, but mostly two main lifts that I'm focused on in that, in that session. And so if I didn't get to it that day, it's not hard for me to pair up, you know, four, four exercises right. the next day. Right. And I'm still Tons under, of flexibility. Yeah. I'm still under an hour workout and I can either split that up in two short 20 minute workouts the next day, or I can make it one 40 minute workout afterwards. Mm -hmm. And so the flexibility of it has been incredible. And I, I love the way I feel. And I love that ability to do that. And I would have never guessed that I would have seen the results that I'm seeing from training that. Little. Yeah. And you can, in, in typically too, when you do something like this, you tend to um, do more of the more effective exercises and less of the less effective exercises because you don't have, I'm not in, I'm not in the gym for an hour uh, right now. I'm only here for 20 minutes. So let me do the ones that are the most important. And yeah. so what ends up happening over time is you end up practicing the most effective lifts more often and you end up doing less of the less effective lifts. Uh, you know, and you end up doing them less often. So generally speaking, your entire workout programming starts to look a lot better because you're in the gym for a shorter period of time or you're working out for a shorter period of time, even though it's more frequent, you're going to pick better exercises typically. Well, because, I mean, they're more demanding on the body. They're more taxing. And it's like when you stack them all together for like your hour-long workouts, you really got to kind of psych yourself up for some of those workouts some days yeah. otherwise. And so to be able to just have, you know, one to two of those really just hyper-focus on that, uh, man, it, it relieves you of a lot of that stress yeah. going in. Now, here's here's a, here's an interesting one. I love This point right here really blew my mind when I thought about it and I found data to, to support this and back it up. And what I mean by when I thought about it is when I thought about all the clients I trained, I, I knew this to be very true. In fact, I'll ask you, Adam, how has your diet changed since you started working out short workouts daily well, versus your longer workouts? So here's the thing that I, and I've known this always about just training in general is that I'm always better eating on a day that I train. Because what ends up happening is that uh, it's and it's like a psychological thing. It's like, by the way, this is proven in studies. Yeah, and people, I think a lot of people actually think it would be the opposite. A lot of people think like people go, oh, and like I'm, is it an excuse to eat? Yeah, as an excuse to go eat like an asshole. But it's to me, it's like not that at all. Like it, for me, when I train, I get this feeling like, oh, I don't want to mess. I've already, I'm already, I'm already heading in the right direction right now. Now I want to optimize that, and I know that how important it is to hit protein intake and have a balanced diet and how much that compounds your results. So my my thought process always, when I lift, it's always my best day of eating. It's the days that I don't lift that's challenging for me to make good food choices. So what's great about these short and frequent workouts, it's like every day I'm doing a little bit of something. So it has that like psychological game that it ends up playing with me of just like, oh, I lifted today. Like I want to make sure I build muscle. I don't want to miss my protein intake. I want to make sure I have a good day of eating and I eat better that way. They've done studies on this and they found that people tend to improve their diet, even when they're told not to, even when they don't think they're, they want to, just when they start exercising. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things like, I'm already in the mode, so now I'm gonna, I think I'm going to feed myself a little bit better. And so why is this important around what we're talking about? Well, if you work out a little every day, 
you're more likely to eat better every day versus when you work out less frequently and longer. By also, by the way, what you said earlier, Adam, about people, you know, the people thinking, well, maybe people will make excuses with 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 heart with workouts. You know when that happens? When a workout is over, when it, it's overtraining or, or produces too much fatigue. Mm. So when someone goes into a workout and they crawl out of the gym because they just did an hour and a half of whatever, CrossFit or whatever, that's when they go, oh my God, I'm dead. Yeah. I'm going to go eat that pizza. Yeah. That's when it happens. It's not from the appropriate application Craving of exercise. Craving a donut right now. Correct. In fact, and why? Because you beat the shit out of yourself. Yeah. And your body's looking for a little boost is that, of serotonin. Is that, I was going to say, is that a similar hormonal effect that happens when we get lack of sleep too? So it's like stress on the body yes, because you didn't get good sleep. So, yeah. so it's a hormonal response yes. and then you have these cravings that happen. Yes. Similar effects happen when yes. I and, and overtrain the body. They do, right? Wow. So, and, and, and again, studies show this, that when people start working out and they do it appropriately, they naturally start to improve their diet. So what I found, and when I was thinking about this, I'm like, oh my God, this is so true. When I would have clients that would struggle to even show up to train with me twice a week. So I would train people, for, you know, twice a week, 60 minutes, sometimes three days a week. That was the average client. The average client I had training with me two or three days a week, okay, for 60 minutes each time. The clients that struggled to make it two days a week where it was like, oh, we were just missing workouts left and right. And sometimes I work out once a week. Sometimes they wouldn't. This is what I would prescribe. I'd say, okay, here's your 15-minute workout do it every single day. And they would be much more consistent. They'd end up working out much more often. And then I used to notice the side effect of them eating better. And I'd ask them, like, you're, 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 you know, I know you're tracking. I'm having you write things down or whatever. You're starting to eat a lot healthier. Like, well, when I work out a little bit, it makes me want to eat healthier. Yeah. It's like, oh, this is really cool. Yeah. I mean, it's the whole process of self improvement. I mean, when you realize you're doing good things for your body, it's feedback for your body. And so it's like, it's a natural thing to want to then also kind of look at other areas that you can improve. And I think that nutrition is just like, it goes hand in hand with that. So it's just, it seems like a natural fit. That's I, right. I mean, I really, I, I don't know if this is the trainer in me because Katrina and I used to talk about this a lot. Like I remember when we first started dating, um, you know, we'd have our ebb and flow of like when we were being consistent with the diet and training and other times when we were less consistent with our training and diet. And uh, she would always be like, dude, it's fr so frustrating to watch you like all of a sudden change. She's like, I swear to God, it's three workouts. Like flip a switch. Said, yeah. And all of a sudden your body changed. I said, well, it's because I don't, I don't, I change a lot all at one time and I know exactly what I need to change to where I'm not over correcting and I'm, I'm feeding my body what it needs based off of what I, I'm, I'm training. I said, this is an area where I think a lot of people make mistakes is they, they go from bad to good. And what bad to good looks like is like over consuming junk food, not exercising to all of a sudden cutting calories and, and lifting weights really, really hard. It's like all, I know exactly what I need to do. I need to feed my body properly because I know I'm notorious for under consuming protein when I'm not tracking and I'm not dialed in. And I know if I'm not, and I know I, I have to do as little as possible, elicit change. So I just need to stimulate the body to tell the body to build muscle and then feed it properly. And so it's the, the, and I know that combination works so, so effectively that when I decide, okay, I'm, I'm lifting, I'm work, working out. I know right away if I got to feed my body that way, if I want the, the maximum, maximum results from it. Otherwise you're just not going to see as much results. I mean, you train just training and not making any in diet, any diet changes will show some positive benefits. We know that, but if you, if you do that with eating correctly and feeding the body properly, the, the the benefits are accelerating. Right. But here's the important point. You're more likely to be able to be consistent with better eating. I say better because it depends on who you are and how you're eating now. So just generally better. It's easier to do that, to move in the better direction with diet when you're exercising consistently. It's harder when you're not exercising right. consistently. Definitely. That's just a fact. So because short workouts, short frequent workouts – tend to encourage consistency just from a behavioral standpoint, it, it, it bears the reason that you're going to also notice better results with your nutrition for two reasons. One, you're working out more often. So you're not working out as long per workout. Remember, we're, we're, we're controlling for the volume, right? So instead of doing two one-hour workouts, okay, you did 20-minute 20, 20 workouts every single day. But you're working out every single day now. And what else do you do every single day? You eat. So you're more likely to have better behaviors around food as well. Now, speaking of you know doing things every single day, that really encourages adaptation when it comes to the body. Overhealing 
overhealing. So remember, when you when you work out, your your muscles get some damage. They have to heal, but they also have to adapt. That's what, or they, or you want them to adapt. That's the muscle building process. So long as the intensity is applied correctly. That's right. And healing and adapting are are different. Healing is like you know, I scratch my skin. I've got a cut. Healing is getting the skin to to heal over. Adapting would be to create a callus over the skin so that next time I don't cut it as easily. Well, ad adaptation tends to be encouraged with frequent exposure, frequent stimulation. Okay, this is why. Again, if you've ever heard our podcast and somebody say something like, "How do I get better at push-ups?" or "How do I get better at pull-ups?" or "How do I get better at mm -hmm. this exercise?" What do we always say? Practice it every single day, rather than doing one workout where you're hammering your body. Take that exercise, that pull-ups. And put a pull-up bar in your house, and every time you pass it, do like two or three pull-ups, and then watch how fast you get stronger. It really does encourage adaptation over anything else. And again, for the advanced lifters, we've known this for a long time. Look, even back in the day when Arnold and those guys used to work out and do this crazy high volume workouts, they would do something called a double split routine. A double split routine is instead of doing two hours in the morning, they do an hour in the morning and an hour at night. They work out seven days a week. Why? They found that by breaking up the workouts increasing the, the exposure, it reduced the, the fatigue, reduced the damage, accelerated adaptation. It accelerated the muscle building process. Now, that's an extreme example. We're talking about super advanced, genetically gifted steroid enhanced lifters. Mm -hmm. But for the average person, you can apply this as well. So again, a 30 minute workout every single day or a 20 or 25 minute workout every single day, probably going to be more effective for all the reasons that we just talked about than your typical two hour, two one hour workouts or three one hour workouts just because of all the stuff that we talked about. Yeah, I think the key is the is knowing um, to not overdo it. Right? That's right. I, yeah, I think the, the, the key- Well, you got to program it right. Yeah, I mean, that's the- I think that's the mistake that the younger version of me would have made. Like, I would hear a lot of the stuff you guys are saying right now and go like, oh, okay, I'm going to train every day then. Yeah. But then I'm thinking like, so that means I'm hitting chest, you know, three, four times a week. the same now. intensity. Yeah, with the same intensity that I was doing it one day a week before- and that's where there's this, because you still have this idea of like, oh, more is better. Or if I, if I was doing it one day, now I'm going to do it six days. It's like, no, it's like you have to learn to scale back on the intensity. I mean, honestly, when these workouts are done correctly, it's it's actually a really interesting feeling when you leave. It's And mm -hmm. it takes a bit for the-, the It uh, takes a little discipline. It's to psychologically challenging. It, it is, because you're, you, you're not really drenched in sweat. Uh, you might have a little bit of a pump, you know, depending on what exercises you paired for that. Did day. I do enough? Yeah, you, and you and, you, you, and like. you, you do. You feel energized, and a, and a lot of times I feel like oh, I could I could do a few more things. And more often than not, I find myself having the conversation of that's enough to myself. Then going like, oh, I, I can do more. Yeah. Let's do more. I have to go like, okay, I'm good. You know, I know what I did yesterday. I know what I did today. I know what I plan to do tomorrow. Like, I know I want to do more because I'm all starting to get aired up and get in a rhythm and feel good, but I'm, I'm good. I'm done. By the way, um, you know, for people who are like, well, what about all your other MAPS programs that, you know, encourage, you know, three full body workouts, or whatever. If you look at all of our MAPS programs, they actually encourage daily frequency. Yeah. Every the single frequency builder is built in there. Every single pro MAPS anabolic, if you do the trigger sessions, you're doing a little bit of something every single day with maybe two longer workouts. MAPS Aesthetic, you're doing focus sessions on your off days, which means you're kind of working out almost every day. MAPS Performance, you have mobility sessions. Um, every single program, we knew the frequency, uh, how important frequency of exposure was in every single program. Now, here's what we did, um, because this next program that we're about to release, we did because we said, okay, let's solve the consistency issue for the average person. Let's do our best job at solving it, but also providing phenomenal results. So we designed a program we're calling MAPS 15 Minutes, and it's 15 minutes a day. Now, the person that we wrote this program for is the person that struggles with consistency. So the workouts are designed around uh, a suspension trainer and a pair of dumbbells or some resistance bands. That way you have it in your home, you go do your 15-minute workout, and you're done. Now, that being said, we also wanted to include an advanced version because there's a lot of people listening right now that are like, I want to apply these principles to my advanced workouts. Mm -hmm. And this is how I work out right now. This is how Adam's working out right now. I know Doug is experimenting with this as well. And I know, Justin, you've been doing this for a long time. Yep. So we put an advanced version in MAPS 15 minutes that'll take you about 20, 25 minutes if you really waste your time doing this workout, about 30 minutes. And you do that every single day. So about 20, 25 minutes every single day, which revol revolves around barbells, and dumbbells. So with the advanced version, you will want to have access to barbells and dumbbells. You are doing big compound lifts like dump, like 
you know, deadlifts and squats and overhead presses and stuff like that, more bodybuilding focused. But math 15 minutes, the original is going to be more for the person who's like, I just, I just, it's hard for me to be consistent and I can't go to the gym. So what can I do? That one is written with the suspension trainers and with a pair of dumbbells. So you can do anywhere. So with this program comes that version plus the advanced version for those of you that want to test this out on yourself and say, okay, if I do big lifts, big barbell lifts every single day for 20 to 25 minutes, what's going to happen to my gains? What's going to happen to my strength? Test it out. Try it yourself. Now, because it's a brand new program where we're just launching it, what we're doing, like what we do whenever we launch a new program is we put it on sale. So it's going to be $20 off. It's, it's retail price. So it's going to retail for $97, but you can get maps 15 minutes for, 70, for, uh, for $20 off. So you get $20 off right now, plus two eBooks that we're going to include for free. One of them is on sleep, how to maximize the benefits of sleep. It's called the power of sleep. And the second one is our occlusion training guide. Occlusion training is a really novel technique. It's stimulating muscle growth and getting crazy pumps. So $20 off, you get maps, 15 minutes, plus the bonus advanced version, which is in there already, plus two free eBooks, the power of sleep, and the occlusion training guide. You can get all of them at maps15minutes.com, but you have to use the code 15 special for the discount plus the free eBooks. And of course, it comes like all of our programs with a 30-day money back guarantee. So you can test it out for 30 minutes, see what happens. If you don't like it, return it, and we'll just give you your money back. This one's really important, and that is to phase your training. If somebody trains for a full year doing a bench press, and they're always aiming for five reps, if you compared that person to a person who did bench press where they did three or four weeks of five reps, but then they did three or four weeks of 12 reps and then three or four weeks of, let's say, 15 to 20 reps, and then they'll throw in some supersets, at the end of that year, you're going to see more consistent progress from the person who's moving in and out and less injury. That's another thing. You'll see less injury as well.